So you couldn't go to school, and and at that point, I'm I'm now I'm told that they have um music industry as a major, but at that at the time I was in school, that was it was not even an option. So I'm just looking at this. It wasn't at the time, man. I considered it a hobby. But I never can say, and it, it was a hobby right. that I loved the most. Actually, you know, I'm 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 up on every single record, every single artist. I loved everything about the culture, but I never saw it, saw it as a career choice. For you, who now you're starting to marry your love of the culture with mm-hmm. your writing, mm-hmm. was it a seamless thing for you to see? Like, you know what? This is actually a career. Or wow. you start to go a traditional route and then back into the fact, like most people do, I know myself, like, you know what, what am I doing? Why am I searching for a traditional nine to five? Let me just follow what I love. Let me just follow my passion mm. because it is hip hop and it's music. Man, that is the best question. Um, I would have to say in high school, it was my English teacher, my advanced English teacher who was like, yo, you got something, man. You really should like hone this in because you got something. You're you're special with this. And I didn't necessarily think I was special until he said it, and and he made he made that inference. And then um, when I got to college, I was uh I was I started writing for the college paper. I thought it was corny at first because I used to read the college paper and be like, these dudes don't know nothing about hip hop. What they talking about? They start, they was trying to review records and stuff. And you know, I'm I'm a Brooklyn kid, and in high school, we used to always, you know, argue about who was nicer, Biggie, Jay Z, or Nas, or whatever you want to no. say. And um, you know, those debates, they, they what they do is they um they curate your thoughts on on your critique, you because now you gotta you gotta go back and forth against somebody that is a staunch, you know, Biggie fan, and then now you know you're a Nas fan, you gotta be able to have those arguments ready. So I felt like some of the arguments and some of the stuff that they were writing in the college paper weren't all the way up, except for like this one dude who used to always do it. And then when he started doing it, and I I started looking like, maybe I can be like one of those writers in the source. Maybe I can be like one of my favorite writers in, in, in Vibe. And that was my goal. I wanted to get to Vibe. I was like, yo, I'm gonna get in that magazine at some point. And sure enough, we were only 10 blocks away. I called up and, and I, I cold called them, Sean. I cold called Bob. I saw the number on their website in 96. My man picked up my man, Greg Bishop, who's now the um, small commissioners. Uh, he's the commissioner of small business for New York City, which is wild with, with Mayor de Blasio. Yep. Uh, that's, my, that's my bro. Um, he, he brought me on the team and I was with them for a year, no pay. No pay. And at the time, I was also working, I just worked for like two years at the New York Public Library System. And I was teaching illiterate adults how to use uh, computers and learn how to read. So I was doing that for two years. And there was this one individual there, man, my man, Mr. Larry Cook. I'll never forget him. Older gentleman. He was in like his mid-50s at the time, early 50s. And he hadn't learned how to read his whole life. And he used to see me walk in there every other day when he would come and I would have a stack of magazines with me. And he would be like, man, you always reading the magazines, talking about you wish you was in there. I wish I could read like you. If I could read like you and write like you, I'd be in all of them. I'd be in every <laughs> last one of them. <laughs> and he was like, he was pushing me to go forth into what I wanted to do because as much as I was helping them, they were inspiring me. I love and it. when he said that to me, I was just like, Wow, this man is saying if he had the simple tools that he's trying to acquire this late in life, if he had them in, at my age, which I was like 20 at the time, I was 19 when I started there and I was 20 when he told me this, he was like, I would be all in the magazine. You see Larry Cook everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I always, I try to mention him because it was at that moment when I realized, like, what's slowing me down? I have the tools. I just need to get in so I could use my tools. And um, he was very instrumental in, in stripping away whatever fear or whatever obstacle I thought was there. You know, okay, I got a couple of questions for you. 
I'm Who ready. Who were you in school when you decided to reach out to Vibe for this internship? Wow, I was in my I was in my junior year. You're in your junior year. I'm I'm in the end. Yeah, I'm in the end of my sophomore, going into my junior year. Yep. Okay, so you're telling me it's not a, a college advisor, it's not a counselor on the campus. It is literally a guy who had never learned to read or write in his life that gave you the motivation to say, look, if he had the tools that I currently possess yep. at his at my age, he's telling me to yep. go for it. This was your motivate, like, yep. like in some ways, he was every bit of a mentor to you, as you. Oh no question. Yeah. No question, man. No question. I mean, the, uh, to be real with you, man. Sometimes I miss those days, and I'm and I'm looking for ways to get back into that with the library system. I'm gonna have a a, a talk with some people over there. Uh, those two years that I was there, man, and the people that I was able to connect with, just on a personal level just hearing their stories and finding out why they were illiterate and, and why they didn't finish school and why it was, it, it was tough for them. Cause some of them had, you know, um, different kind of learning disabilities and stuff like that. And, and we would work through it. And, and a lot of it wasn't, this is what you do. A lot of it was just hearing them out, getting them to a, a place of trust where they would open up to be taught. And, you know, to be able to affect people's lives that way, you don't realize how much they're affecting you and how much they're teaching you life lessons on, on trust and trusting other people. And, just, and this is just in them trying to acquire a skill set that they need in everyday life. And once again, Mr. Cook, he was a truck driver. He couldn't even read the signs, but he was a truck driver for like 20 something years. I'm going on to 30 years and he was able to go all over the all over the country just based off like different things that we don't enhance on because we already know how to read. So his interactions and, and, and the way that he could communicate verbally and just by facial expressions and stuff, you pick that stuff up from people. He was mentoring me in that way. He was giving me different kind of, you know, networking skills that helped me along my way once I got in with my with my tools, as he called them, you know, my writing tools. So, yes, indeed, man. He was the one. It wasn't a. It wasn't a college advisor. None of that. It was him saying if he had the skills, he would be doing it, and I should be doing that now. You know, I think this is such an important lesson for people to understand. I I, I, I truly believe God. He's going to give you the the. the oh, yeah. It's almost like driving on the highway and seeing those signs, right? Yeah. Mister Cook by all accounts, should not have been one of those signs for you. It should have been mm -hmm. through your, your college advisor, your counselor, but you have to be exactly. tuned and you have to be open to listening and understanding that sometimes you are being directed and it's going to come from the most you exactly. know, un unexpected source. And I'm so Automatic. happy that you listened, you heard, yep. But most important, you acted. You understood that I have to take action. So now, you get over the vibe. Yep. I love the fact that you made a cold call. I love that because people... What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.